And if you condition them not to accept no as an answer, you might as well get ready to take care of them for the rest of your life. Because this world ain't no food. They'll break them down and bash them down if you don't protect them from this mean and cruel world. Moses' mother protected her baby. But not only did she protect him, but she prepared him for his journey up the river. Did you notice her actions? How carefully and meticulously she prepared him for his journey? The Bible says she made him an ark of bulrushes. Bulrushes were sturdy, tall reeds that grew along the river's bank. She waterproofed the vessel by putting slime and pitch on the vessel. This was to make sure that the ark would sink while her baby was on the inside. If you look carefully at what Moses' mother did, you can see that she was preparing him for certain aspects of his journey. First of all, she was preparing him for the ride of the river. That's why she needed the ark. He could, he could not swim right. Come on in the room, right. to his destination. Mm -hmm. So he needed something that was going to carry him yeah. Yeah. to where he needed to be. Mm -hmm. My brother, my sister, my mother, my father, mm -hmm. what vessel yeah. have you placed your child in? Mm -hmm. What kind of vehicle? All right. Have you placed them in to carry them to their destination? Do you know whether or not they're going to make this journey safely? Right. Or have you just haphazardly let them figure it out on their own? Moses' mother knew it. If her, if her baby was going to be preserved, she had to make something to carry him. Not only did she prepare him for the ride, she also prepared him for the reality of the river. This is why the ark had to be waterproof. Yes. The reality of the river is uncertainty. And you don't know what may happen on the river to cause the water from the river to try to get in the ark. And so the only way to ensure Moses' safety was to make sure that he stayed in the water while at the same time making sure the water didn't get to him. It was all right for Moses to be in the water, but it wasn't all right for the water to be in the ark. If that was the case, she would have had a serious problem. Mm -hmm. So she took time to waterproof it. Mm -hmm. So her baby could be in the water mm -hmm. and yet not have the water in him. Mm -hmm. How much time have we taken to make sure our children are in the world mm -hmm. while making sure that the world don't get in our children? Mm -hmm. What are you keeping them from? that makes sure they don't look like the world, talk like the world, act like the world, dance like the world, cuss like the world, drink like the world, smoke like the world. What do you do to make sure that your child is distinctively different from their peers? around them. I did not prepare them for the uncertainty of the river. See, many of our children get lost around the bend. The bend of the river represents that 
turn yes. that the current takes them when they're out of our sight. Y'all get that? Yes. And, and if I don't put in my child what needs to be in there, all right, all right. When they go around the bed, yes. hello in here, they gonna do some things that's gonna break my heart. I have to prepare them for the uncertainty of their journey. If not, they'll latch on to something that they think will help them cope with what they're dealing with. The majority of the boys and girls that join gangs do so because they're longing to have family structure and love. The gang convinces them that we love you and that we are your family. Yes, sir. The gang convinces them right. that we are here for you, ride or die. Amen. The gang convinces them that they are a part of something significant. And if it comes down to it, you ought to give your life for your gang. Amen. Reason why we lose them oh, round the being to gang. Because we have a prepared them for the uncertainty of the river of life. Yes. Not only did she prepare him mm -hmm. for his journey of the river, but she put him in the right place yes. at the right time. Yes. She put him among the flags. Flags were tall grasses that grew up out of the river. This was to conceal him from the enemy favor, yet reveal him to the one that would save him, Pharaoh's door. Being in the right place at the right time is what made the difference in Moses' life. Do we have our children? In the right place, All right. at the right time. Right. I know you take them to the ball game, okay. but what about the Bible ball? Right. I know you take them to karate, mm -hmm. but what about taking them to the night out when the kids are having a church lock in? Mm -hmm. Hmm? I know you sent them to summer camp. Mm -hmm. How often do you take them to vacation Bible camp? Mm -hmm. Come on in the room here. Yeah. Are you putting your child in the right place? Oh, Y'all looking funny. Come on, come on. Ephesians chapter 6. All right. Beginning at verse number 4. Bible says, and the fathers provoke not your children to wrath. It is, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the law. You can provoke that child to be an angry child. By not having them in the right place at the right time. They got to see the benefit of worship service. They got to see the blessing of Bible class. And if you ain't learned it, how do you expect for them to learn? Uh, the Bible has always shown us that throughout the history of God's children, he had them teach what he taught them to their children. Uh, I'm not going to read it for time's sake, but uh, this afternoon, stop by 